All right, so um, let's start. Before we start, um, someone on Piazza asked me, "What is the music we're playing here?" So the music playlist I'll typed in the um, in the chat. It's called Chill the Cow. So this guy, um, lo-fi study music. So if you Google it, um, I mean it's on YouTube, Amazon Music, iTunes, you name it. I mean, it basically helps you chill. So as the name suggests. Um, so today we'll continue to learn uh, the SciPy Optimize, and also uh, I will introduce us. I wouldn't say, but uh, I, I would say a very important skill in uh, coding Python and uh, make your code uh, work better. So it's called a callback. But let's uh, briefly review what we did uh, last time. So what we did last time is we. We, we try to use the SciPy optimize submodule. So, uh, um, so this optimize module um, is optimize and root binding, and it has lots of uh, great uh, functions, functionalities, and uh, uh, can help us. For example, we don't have to uh, implement many things by ourselves. Um, so, and again, our friend is Rosenbrock function. Um, so Rosenbrock function, like uh, we, uh, we experience using gradient descent. So we have a long alley of, uh, at which the gradient is extremely small. And uh, therefore, we have trouble, you know. So, for example, our grade, if our algorithm somehow reaches here and uh, uh, we choose a fixed step size, then <laughs> it takes like a million steps maybe to reach here, which is our one one is our uh, true global minimizer. And uh, um, the idea here is we implement uh, the Rosenbrock function in a very arbitrary and uh, generalizable way. So this is arbitrary dimension of Rosenbrock function and you guys can find on Wikipedia. So here, um, I, I'm not sure if I uh, introduce this uh, zero like or not. Zero like is a very, very general way of uh, um, of making our code flexible. For example, we have NumPy, right? So uh, we can we can do NumPy zeros. But the thing here is for zeros, we have to specify like its dimension. For example, if we want to get an array with five zeros, we have to do this. However, if we want to do arbitrary dimension without specifying the dimension, uh, zero like is a very handy function to do. So for example, if uh, if uh, I'm not sure if zero like takes a list, A is array like, okay, good, A can be. So for example, A is one, two, uh, nine, 190, all right? I mean, we don't have to even retrieve A's dimension if we call uh, NumPy zero like a, we'll get uh, a zero array matching a's dimension. So this is a very, very handy function for us uh, to perform this uh, uh, arbitrary dimensions uh, optimization problem. Um, so last time we basically we follow this minimize code analyzer seems uh, uh, stuck here. Okay, so for example, um, if we put a help, 
uh, optimize, uh, minimize. All right, I understand my computer is slow. So uh, let me just interrupt that. Oh, <laughs> it printed out, okay. Uh, I think last time it's too long, so uh, it's got truncated. Um, so basically, okay, it's so long. Um, so basically, okay, it's too long, but uh, let me... Uh, So basically we want to perform um, this functions of minimization. And this is our initial guess. The method is Newton CG. Newton CG is just a CG, but uh, um, for a function. Uh, so we have two, we have two iterations, one inner and one outer, like we learned the last time. And Jack means gradient. So we implement the gradient. This is also, um, what uh, we want to do for the homework is we implement the gradient for the um, for the bio function, and for the bio function, um, you can implement the Hessian. Uh, it will make our algorithm more stable, uh, but you don't have to. So uh, the algorithm will automatically compute Hessian uh, for uh, for us. So there's the callback function. The callback function here I call is print. What essentially it does is it literally prints. So if we run this cell, um, so let's first run this. So if we run this cell, we'll get a, a, we'll get a print. And uh, um, which is this. So it will print this. So I believe if I comment out this line, Uh, so nothing nothing will happen so we'll we'll see here we'll, we'll only see here if we disable this callback function it will only uh do this and without print the result so let's try it oh sorry uh, without print these result my bad so if we add this callback function as we can see uh every iteration gets printed Unexpected indent. Oh, my bad. Okay. So we add a callback function. The callback changes the behavior of this function. Here is a customized callback, but uh, let's first uh, uh, learn what, he, what is callback. So callback is actually I mean, the explanation is quite long. So basically, the idea is, the basic idea is we have two functions. Our function A is our main function. And function B, I, would, I wouldn't say objective function, maybe let's say our utility function or something else, or say, uh, uh, or something else. So, uh, but basically we have a function A and uh, uh, we have another function, which is B. So we want to call function A calls function B. So what I do my call is, let me add a new cell here. So for example, if we have function one, okay. So uh, func one is like add two numbers. So, and we can have, we can actually call function one in another function. So function two, func one uh, or func, okay. So the thing here is, for example, we can return, for example, func, uh, so for example, we can do, uh, a, B, funk. Okay. 
So we return funk A and B. Okay. And now what happens is if we call funk two, funk one, uh, but we have to give AB, for example, if we do one and two. And uh, uh, so it will return, basically, it's a very twisted way of doing this. So it will return three. Oh, I haven't executed that. So for example, it will return three. All right. But the thing here, the thing here is um, like uh, this is a this is a um, a like a, a minimum possible um, example of callback. So a callback literally is just in the function, okay, and we call another function. Sometimes this function is, for example, this function is just, uh, um, let's say, let's this function is just uh, um, a print function, for example, let's print. Uh, we, are, we are summing up A and B, but uh, uh, let me, so I'll introduce uh, what this means. So A and B. And maybe we can comment out this, we don't return anything. So for function two, we return A plus B. Okay. And let's see. So the thing here is uh, uh, for function one, we need to specify like A and B. So for example, here we call function one A and B, all right? And as we can see, function two is basically adding these two up. Function one is like a helper function that will print uh, what we're doing. So we're summing up one and two. And by the way, let's, uh, let me introduce what this F means. So F, F means just F string. So it's a F string or function string. So for example, let's try to print um, the simple, this is the simplest example, okay? So if we print, um, for example, okay, so if we print one plus two, we'll literally get one plus two, nothing will happen. So it will one plus two because this is a string. So inside the string, uh, everything is being treated like a, a character. It's not uh, like a, a number. So similar things, for example, if we do If we do one plus two, okay. So it will be curly bracket one plus two. However, if we add a little f, so not capitalized f, uh, just a little f is good, I think. If we add a little f here, what's inside the parentheses will be evaluated. For example, uh, Python has so Python has, uh, uh, oh, sorry, it should be string. So Python has a evaluation function. So for example, we can evaluate uh, what's happening here. So it's evaluate this, uh, this string. So essentially the function string is if we add a F here, what's inside. So inside the curly bracket, uh, gets a call of evaluation. I mean, so then we can uh, we can do um, the print can this way. It's much much more flexible. So this is introduced in Python three. If you have learned using Python two in your programming one hundred one class, so this is new. And 
for example, we can do um, uh, today is so. Uh, for example, we can uh, import date time. I think I should uh, from date time import uh, date. So today is date. Oh, my bad. I, I should. Um, mm, okay. I think it's date time. Is it? So uh, date. Aha. Uh -huh. I think it's uh, from daytime import date time. Yeah, there we go. So date time. Okay, let me let me just import time. So for example, right now um um right now is so time will print in uh, seconds. I think it's a total seconds passed from AC zero. I'm not sure, but for example, if we do this, it will print this time and in seconds. Okay, so right now is whatever here. So we, we have so many seconds have passed. Um, so this is uh, this is what uh, an F string does, and now let's look back here. And this is a simplest example of callbacks. And then what happens is we can actually have uh, a much more complicated uh, callback function. So right now this is our more complicated uh, callback function. So we have three components. All right, so we have uh, three components. The first one is our main function. Uh, second one is square function. Square function can be viewed as the main function. So uh, when we call the main function, this square function is one argument of the main function. Okay. And this report progress is some helper functions. For example, it expands the functionality of the main function. So um, what happens here is we report the progress. Basically, um, I wouldn't say add it. Let's change this to add it. Um, so report progress is item added, um, this uh, i. Actually, it should be i square, but then running result is a result. Okay. Um, now, for example, and this is our main function. So the main function is this is uh, main functions. What main function does? So it's like a main function need to call this square, and the number of calls is like how. For example, we want to add square. Okay. So basically, we want to add i square from from i equals one till i equals number of calls okay so for example and let's return result so for example right here the first line is nothing but print and then we start adding. So for range uh, from one to number, number of calls plus one. So by the way, uh, the range one to this, this is not achieved. Essentially it's one to number of calls. So range, so let me emphasize again, the range is like one number less. So for I in range one five uh, print I will only get one to five. Four. Okay, so five is like non-inclusive, and right here, for example, okay, if we run this, if we run this block of code, uh, we'll basically we'll get this. Okay, 
So, and now let me explain what happens uh, before the hood. First, let's comment out this uh, uh, ith cause of the function. So if we comment out, uh, we'll basically uh, get uh, this printed result. Uh, basically the main, it's a main function we have executed. And the total number of calls is how much, how many times we call this func. And this func is square function we have implemented here. Okay. And uh, uh, the report interval is we just said, okay, so every five iterations, so every five iterations, we call this callback function. This callback function is like a customizable function outside of our main function. And we can, we can pretty much customize it any way we want. Um, so for example, right here, um, so item added five is 55. So apparently we can check actually, um, for example, so uh, let's do uh, I square for I in range one six. So basically we'll get that, right? So this is a, this is a square from one, four, nine, 16, 25. And the result is 55 is nothing but the sum of uh, this number. All right, so um, at the fifth iteration, uh, 55 got printed. It's like a tracking our result. Just make sure uh, we are not lost. And this is extremely useful, uh, for example, in the optimization procedure, because when we call a function, like not implemented by ourselves, it it is a black box, like, the, like this one, like the... Uh, like this function right here. This function a uh, minimize is a black box. If somehow it goes wrong, there is no way that we can track it. Okay. So like I said earlier, if we comment this out, uh, the history just won't print. Um, okay. So essentially this callback function is tracking our progress. Um, so right now, for example, um, this callback function basically prints i and the result. Result is a current result, and uh, i is our i iteration. So, uh, so this is how we implement a more complicated callback. So the main, let's recap. The main is our main function, like uh, our task. And the square is some function. So we want to, uh, so our main function is a task on this square function. It's like we add a bunch of squares, okay? So now let's look back at our, um, this example. So this is our main function, the minimize. Optimize minimize is our main function. And the Rosenbrock function and the Rosenbrock grad function is like uh, what we want our main function do some job on. It's like uh, uh, our main function has to do some, for example, minimization for this Rosenbrock function, okay? And this callback is some utility function we add to the main function, but without changing the main function's code. As we can see, this minimize, we cannot change minimize code. Oh, I forgot, my Python inter interpreter can't. Let's just go to uh, optimize, okay? So for example, these code we can change. Uh, we, we can change the code here, okay? So we can change in optimize. For example, uh, we can go to minimize, but, uh, um, but we can't change any. So we, we cannot change the code here. Um, and by the way, it's too complicated to find uh, a place that for us to change. So sometimes if we change one thing, the whole thing got like collapse. And 
to make our program more debug friendly, we simply add this callback function. Okay. So for example, let, let's uh, let's execute. Uh, let let me close this, and uh, let's execute this again. Um, so the result uh, is, I believe, like a. So for example, this is a result is what minimize returns. It's like a, it's like a optimize. Uh, it's like a optimize. Uh, so for example, this result is right here. So this is our uh, like a terminal gradient, which is uh, which is quite close to zero. And the function value is this, which is quite uh, close to our true global minimum, which is zero. And this is a number of function value evaluation, and this is the number of uh, um, gradient evaluation. So, and this is our uh, minimizer. But uh, let's look at uh, uh, this uh, function. So, um, let's look at the result. Um, the thing is, the result only ha has the uh, only has a terminal line. It's like the last iteration. Okay. We do not know, so we we do wanna we do want to know um, the intermediate uh, values. For example, we wanna compare. For example, if we wanna compare different results, how fast they converge, we do want intermediate values. For example, here we only have the minimizer. I'm sorry, the minimizer and the minimum value. We don't have the intermediate value, so we. Uh, we we do not know what our trajectory is like, so here is we can we can like uh, do this uh, uh, callback function. So for example, uh, okay, oops. So for example, right here, um, we have a callback function implemented here. Um, First, we make these two variables global. It means these two variables are not just inside this function. So for example, let me explain uh, what uh, global means. So for example, uh, let's uh, uh, define function A and B. So uh, we just do, uh, we just do x equals a plus b and we return x. So what happens is uh, um, we can print, for example, so we can do func uh, 1 and 2. Uh, however, if we print a and b, a and b is cannot be accessed outside of the function, okay? So uh, it says B is not, uh, A is defined, but B is not defined. Okay, so uh, let me change this to, uh, let's say C, C, C. So apparently C is not defined, B is not defined either, okay? Um, so this is not defined. Uh, because they are local, so C and B are local variables in this function. Because C and Bs are only accessed in the function call. Okay. However, in this example, if we make these two global, it means it can be accessed outside of this function call. And keep this in mind, our uh, our uh, our callback function has only has only uh, this x as input. So we can think these are like additional input for the callback function. So and what this callback function does is pretty straightforward. Um, first we print intermediate result, okay? So right here is function values. Um, And uh, um, OK, 
Okay, number of uh, F evaluations. Okay, I think this somehow uh, this is a number of iterations. I think uh, it's a number of F's value, but not uh, F's value. Okay, let's let me add another. So we can add F's values. Okay. Um, and what happens is uh, uh, we can what we can do is. So let's first run this to see the result, and let then let's change it to store the um, f's value. So essentially, here we we track in the me intermediate uh, x values. So this np append is nothing; it's very similar. So for example, uh, let me uh, explain this np append. So numpy append is basically we append something. So for example. So if x equals uh, numpy array, uh, this is one, two, and uh, um, let's say uh, four, 10, okay. So uh, x then is one, two, and four, 10, right? And if we want to append something, um, so we can do something like this. So numpy append x, and uh, the second one is array like. So values, for example, we can append uh, three five. I think this won't work because Python will complain. Okay, so we can't append this. But I'm not sure. Let's try it. Okay, yeah. So Python will complain uh, this. Um, if we append along axis zero, axis zero is basically the rows. It's like we want to append this uh, three five to a new row here. What we can do is we have to make this array so that it has um, the same like not number of rows, but number of columns. It's like, a, if we want to append this array to this array along axis zero, we have to make them sharing the same axis one. So what we can do is we can simply add a bracket here. So X is a two by two array. So its shape is two, two. And this guy's shape is one, two, okay. So, uh, and then now we can append, as we can see, it will be, uh, so now it will be good. So this guy is appended to the last one. Okay. So let me add um, append example. Um, the pending example, the, um, the morale of this is uh, X and uh, uh, what is appended along axis zero has to have the same shape in, uh, in axis one. So this is, a, this is a rule of the append. So that's why uh, we need to add a little bracket in X here. Otherwise, uh, Python will complain. Okay, so now let's uh, um, let's try this function again. So this is our initial guess. Um, this is our number function evaluation. And we do the same thing, but this time we have a callback. So now let's see. Um, okay, so we print the intermediate values. And uh, then we stop. The good thing is about xval is now let's look at xval. So we have xval stores the intermediate values. All right, this is a, now a numpy array. This is the initial guess. And uh, um, these are the intermediate steps and it reaches a minimum eventually. 
So um, now if then we can plot this using our utility functions. So for example, um, oh my bad, scale is lock. Uh, why we don't have our function? Um, oh my bad. So I should use that. And uh, um, because this is now in the memory. So let me comment out this. Uh, let me do func three. Okay. Um, so now if we uh, plot this, we'll see uh, it converges to the Rosenbrock function. Okay. So we start from here and uh, um, we basically, we converge along that. So uh, it's good. And now let's add a callback. For example, uh, let's add another callback. So number, this one is essentially, uh, it's like a number of uh, iterations. So for example, it's 43 iterations we have reached our, um, we have reached our, um, this, uh, uh, like uh, uh, the lo global minimum. So we can add f vols. And what we can do is we simply, um, every time we just append the value on f vols. So f vols should be uh, some, some sort of list, maybe say. Um, so for example, we can uh, evaluate this as so this X, we just evaluate using Rosenbrock function. X, okay. And the initial F files should be, so F vol is a list. And the first one is Rosenbrock of our initial guess. So Rosenbrock of our X files. Okay, and now let's run this again. So um, 43 is done. And now we have also the function value. So for example, if we do plt plot f vols, so we'll get uh, uh, the functions value. So let, let's do a semi log y, sorry. So let's do semi log y in the log scale. So we'll see a straight line initially, I believe, and then slows down. Come on. Okay, so straight line initially, and then the convergence slows down. So here, I believe, let's see what happens here is, uh, I think it gets nearer to um, the minimum and the function becomes more convex. So the convergence becomes much faster. Okay. But that's an explanation. So, um, so this is our actually, um, so that's it. So that's it for the material for today. And then I want to talk about uh, some summer research opportunity if you're interested. By the way, um, um, this is our uh, last uh, coding lecture. Um, this is our last coding lecture, and next Friday uh, we won't. Uh, last next Friday we won't have any uh, classes. So um, so let me do this. Okay. So uh, okay. Let me turn off. Uh, this. So um, the thing is, um, so I want to introduce you guys to a website called Kaggle. Um, uh, okay, let me um, let me add, make it bigger. So next semester, um, 
we will use this platform. Uh, we will use this platform to participate some competition that we can uh, implement that we can uh, implement our algorithm in. So next next semester, um, if you are interested and you are confident uh, with your coding skill, uh, you can contact me and uh, we will try to compete in this competition. So Jane Street is uh, some famous hedge fund and uh, um, so they are doing this market prediction competition. Uh, so if you are if you are confident in your uh, Python skill, uh, you can contact me, um, and uh, we'll together we'll participate in this competition, and we'll use some machine learning model. So for example, uh, so the right now the hottest one is called Transformer, and uh, it's perhaps the most I would say popular model of machine translation since uh, um, 2018. So essentially we'll learn, okay, here is Transformer. So essentially we'll learn how to implement Transformer. So ignore this. Okay, this is in TensorFlow, but uh, we'll learn how to implement Transformer in a package called PyTorch. There we go. Um, so we'll learn how to uh, implement Transformer in the uh, uh, in the package called PyTorch. Then in the summer, so uh, if uh, we did good in this uh, Jane Street competition in the summer, so I have a small research project. If you are interested, uh, you uh, you will be supported uh, financially, and uh, um, so we'll together we'll use this Transformer model to solve some. Uh, like ODE question, which requires, so for example, if you have learned this numerical ODE method, um, so solving an ODE um, in the long time, so in the long time, so for example, if we wanna simulate, let me give you guys a simple example. So if we wanna simulate um, how the earth orbiting the sun, using numerical methods, then after a while, the error got accumulated and uh, our error cannot, so our simulation result cannot be trusted. And we have some very expensive numerical methods to do this in a very complicated way. So for example, it's called Rung, Rungakata, Rungakuta. Um, So our research project is instead of using the Rangakuta method, we'll use machine learning methods based on transformers to solve uh, some ODE. So that's like a, a research project possible for next summer. And if you are interested in this, you can contact me first. We'll participate this Jane Street's you know, market prediction. So essentially we're prediction, predicting a uh, time series and using transformer. And then in next summer, so we'll have this research project of uh, uh, implementing in uh, Rangakuta methods. So that's it for today. And uh, on Monday, uh, so on Monday and Wednesday, we'll have two in person, this lecture streamed live. Uh, which will learn some practical, some practicality of the method. For example, we we don't want to do exact line search, and maybe for the Newton method, we don't want to invert a matrix. So that's it for today. Okay, so uh, see you guys next week.